Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Come to you from the great Pacific Northwest. We truly serve an awesome God. A God whose love for us knows no bounds. A God who can reach into the deepest, darkest places where we find ourselves and pull us out. Praise God for that. A word of encouragement comes from Ezra, chapter 9, beginning at verse 8. But now, for a brief moment, the Lord our God has been gracious in leaving us a remnant and giving us a firm place in his sanctuary. And so our God gives light to our eyes and a little relief in our bondage. Though we are slaves, our God has not deserted us in our bondage. He has shown us kindness in the sight of the king of Persia. He has granted us new life to rebuild the house of our God and repair its ruins. And he has given us a wall of protection in Judah and Jerusalem. You know, as I read these words this morning, I think about uh, all that we put ourselves through, the choices we make, uh, not just as individuals, but sometimes as a nation or as a people. Uh, certainly here in the Old Testament, uh, we see the Israelites and how they, you know, time and time again, uh, continue to walk away from God and serve their own gods and, and serve themselves. And, and God, uh, being the good God that he is and the righteous God he is, um, you know, kept his word and, and they were scattered. And yet there was a remnant that he kept uh, of his own people. Uh, and here we see them, even though they're still in bondage, they're going to come out and you know, build this wall, start building these houses and, and rebuild the house of God. And uh, you, of course, you may know the stories or you can read through uh, Ezra and Nehemiah and see what's happened during this part. But uh, what the impact it has for us today is that reminder that no matter where we find ourselves, uh, God is there that God is willing to pull us out. Uh, it's not a matter of if, it's not a matter of going before God to seeing if we find favor in his eyes. We all have favor in God's eyes because we're his creation, because he loves us. Uh, God doesn't go and say, well, eeny, meeny, miny, mo." God doesn't say, well, you know, you've done this and this and this. God says, you are my creation. And if you turn your heart to me, if you repent of your sin, uh, if you uh, choose me, then I've already chosen you. It's not a matter of, uh, if I decide, but I've already decided. You see, God's already decided to love you. God's already decided that when he created you, that he, he created you to be in relationship with him. Uh, because he's a good God uh, and he loves you, uh, we have the choice. Uh, we get to choose whether or not we want to live a life of sin, uh, a life that leads on uh, a path of destruction, a life that leads to hell, or we want to choose his path, which leads to righteousness and hope and peace. Uh, sometimes I think we get caught up in the idea that we're just living for the future, that somehow making this choice is about what's going to happen in the next life, if you will, in eternity. Uh, but it's not. It's also about what's happening today. Do we want to live a life that serves God? Um, you know, that we, we, we do it God's way. Well, why do we want to do it God's way? Because God's way is the holy way, because God's way is the righteous way. If all of mankind here on earth lived according to God, and I know that we could never have that happen here on earth, but if we could, uh, think of how much better life would be if we loved one another, if we truly looked out for one another, if we truly were there for one another and, and did the things that God calls to do, if we lived in harmony with one another um, and respected our differences and celebrated our differences and yet came together as God's children, how awesome would life be? We believe that when Jesus came to earth that he brought a heaven with him, that he brought heaven into earth, that we could now because of his righteousness, because of his holiness, and because of his death on the cross and his resurrection, that we too could now live holy lives. And that doesn't mean perfect lives. I know that, that there's just, it's almost impossible. Um, we certainly believe in, uh, in sanctification, the idea that we can be, you know, made holy, but perfection comes in heaven when we get our, our new bodies and in and, and a new place. But this side, we could still live in this perfect life of choosing and wanting to serve God at all times and not having to, to give in to sin. We don't have to sin when we truly belong to God. Uh, it's, it's still the choice and sometimes we fail, but we have this opportunity to be righteous as God is righteous. But it all comes back to wherever we find ourselves today, God is there ready to lift us up, to lift us out, and release us from that bondage. Praise God for that today. I hope as you hear these words that whatever you're caught up in, uh, I know that many have addictions uh, of some kind. Maybe it's um, smoking, drinking, drugs, uh, whatever the case. Maybe it's food. Maybe it's TV. Maybe it's your cell phone. I don't know, but many people are laced with addictions. Let's give those to God. Let's, let's put them in His hands. Let's help Him to overcome those things that we can focus on what's really important. Let's get out of the bondage that Satan has put us in, and let's live in the freedom that Christ offers day by day.
I'm not talking about being perfect tomorrow. I'm talking about one step at a time, allowing God to transform your life to be more like Christ and to be able to show others how good life can be. That's what I want today. I hope that's what you want as well. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the doors that you're about to open. We pray, Lord, as we come in contact with people today, that your light would shine into us and through us and onto the lives of others. We pray, Lord, that we would become less, that you would become more, that others would see your great love and choose Jesus as their Savior as well. Father, for those that are stuck in the midst of uh, sin and, and, and those who feel like we're in bondage uh, to an addiction maybe, Father, I just pray that you would lift them out right now, that you would give them hope and peace as they uh, move forward towards Jesus. Father, we know that we can do nothing on our own, but with you all things are possible. And so, Lord, we give you all the praise. Father, thank you for all that you're about to do this beautiful day. Father, just bless those who need a special blessing. Be with those who are struggling physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. May your hand be upon each one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, there you have it. God loves you today. God wants to draw you near to him and make you more like Jesus. Praise God for that. Hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow.